Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian here at Al Udeed Air Base in Qatar, home of the Coalition Air Operations Center as well as the 379th Air Expeditionary Wing. Uh, we are here to cover Dimdex as well as Al Udeed, and our coverage is sponsored by Dimdex 2018. And Dimdex stands for the Doha International Maritime Defense Exhibition and Conference that's taking place uh, in downtown Doha. And we're honored to be talking to Lieutenant Colonel Danny Lambert, uh, who is a, a B-52 weapons uh, uh, systems uh, officer, uh, who is with the 69th uh, Expeditionary Bomb uh, Squadron. Uh, you guys are flying the, the B-52, uh, doing the mission uh, down range and sir thanks very much for taking uh, time out of your schedule and we just saw uh, one of the most beautiful airplanes uh, in military history uh, take off uh, talk to us a little bit um, about the mission of the squadron and and what you guys uh, are doing on a daily basis you guys have been here for two years you're about to rotate out and be replaced by by the b1s uh, so that the mission the, the, the heavy bomb mission gets accomplished talk to us a little bit about what you guys are doing downrange thanks Paco yeah basically we're here to provide uh, whatever the CFAC needs as far as air power up north in uh, OIR and OFS, uh, whether that's uh, it's you know strikes being deliberate or uh, close air support, we're there. We do whatever we need to, and we deliver combat air power for the uh, CFAC. Uh, and how has the nature of the mission changed from from your guys' uh, perspective over the last couple of months? Uh, operations are evolving both as we've seen in Syria and Iraq uh, but it's also evolving in Afghanistan where you guys are, are doing uh, those missions you know about a four-hour flight for you guys to get on station about two hours to get over to Syria Iraq uh, at least the neighborhood depending on uh, depending on what else uh, you, you guys have to do talk to us a little bit about how the mission is changing how the ordinance loads are changing and how you're evolving as the mission evolves well the mission's evolving because the uh the, the fight evolves every day. Uh, ISIS is on the run. We're making sure that they stay that way, that they don't regroup. In Afghanistan, we're supporting the same things that we've supported in the past, which is making sure that we uh, neutralize the Taliban and Al-Qaeda and uh, ISIS over there and make sure that they're, they're not relevant. Uh, and once again, you know, we tie that back into our application of combat air power, uh, doing it appropriately and uh, making sure that we do what we have to do to meet objectives. Um, you were talking about, you know, we were talking about close air support, but uh, you were saying that actually it's a lot more dynamic of a situation than that. There are some target sets that you're taking off like that aircraft did, knowing what it is they've got to do, but then there's also adaptive targeting that you're doing on sort of an ad hoc basis, depending on what calls you're getting on the ground. Talk to us about you know, how you guys coordinate all that, how much of the stuff is pre-done, and how much of you guys are you're just improvising, uh, you know, aboard the airplane? So a lot of it has to do with the current, once again, current situation that's going on on the ground. Uh, we take the inputs from the parties that are there and the different, uh, you know, operation centers up, up in the theater and the AOR, and we do what they need done, essentially. So uh, whatever they need to do, whether it be, terrain denial, actual enemy strikes, we make sure that we, uh, we service the targets that they need to get serviced. Uh, additionally, too, with our sensor, we're able to help them in developing targets, uh, conducting uh, armed overwatches and uh, ISR. Uh, you uh, m mentioned, uh, you, you gave me a great entree to ask you about the updates that are happening to the airplane. Um, you know, multifunction displays and B-52s are uh, going to be beautiful together. Talk to us about the whole package of, uh, for anybody who's seen the cockpit of a B-52, <laughs> it is a gorgeous place and it smells better than you can ever imagine, or it sm smells unique, I think is, is one, one way to put it. Uh, talk to us a little bit about all of the uh, upgrades you guys are receiving, because it's actually a tremendous set of capability that's going into the airplane. Absolutely. Uh so, as you well know, the aircraft is, is old, our tails are 60 and 61. Uh, the, where we start is we start with the airframe itself. It's solid, it works, uh, it's a workhorse, it's going to be there. So what we've done over the years is we've continued to build the electronics and the avionics packages that are on it. Uh, our Connect upgrade is giving us a great capability uh, in further situational awareness and uh, better communications uh, and really bringing us more into the 21st century fight. Uh, our or, uh, conventional <laughs> conventional rotary launcher. I, don't, I, want, I want to also say strategic also because yeah. the rotary launcher was always for strategic weapons. Was strategic for nuclear. rotary launcher, yeah. Exactly. So uh, the conventional rotary launcher has brought us into a great capability where we're putting eight more precision guided munitions onto the, uh, onto the aircraft, whereas before we didn't have that capability. And it brings even more uh, 
uh, ability to bring the precision fight that we need to do uh, up north. So we're, we're definitely reaping the benefits of that system. And uh, you guys also have got a, a lot of munitions on the wing, which is a neat thing about the V-52. There are a lot of places you can put bombs either inside or outside. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the other thing is the flexibility of that. So uh, with our weapons outside, we can deliver them faster. They fall right off the aircraft. There's no launcher. So uh, that's one thing that we've, we've enjoyed some success with. Uh, we're able to deliver a lot more uh, munitions in a quicker time frame than some of the other aircraft. Uh, it's it's amazing that at a time when uh, senior Air Force leaders are talking about uh, you know range, persistence, and payload, you've got a platform here that dates from the height of the Cold War. That's exactly all three of those. Absolutely, that's 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 what we're doing. Uh, we we have a long loiter time with the amount of gas and the uh, air fueling capabilities that we have, mixed in with just the pure amount of uh, munitions. Uh, I was surprised the other day. I talked to some of the uh, ground party that we've actually worked with up in Iraq that came back through here for redeployment. And that was his first comment was, hey, look, you guys bring so much arsenal up for us to be able to use that it's uh, it's it's definitely a force multiplier. Um, let me ask you uh, about the teamwork element of the airplane. Uh, this is an airplane that has a bigger crew than most airplanes do. Talk to us about the crew, the crew dynamic, and the teamwork aspect of it, um, because the pilots really got us, it is not an easy airplane to fly, uh, especially if you're gonna air refuel it. Talk to us about the team dynamic, what it's like to be on an airplane that's got the kind of, you know, also on two decks, right? You're on the lower mm -hmm. deck and you got guys on the upper deck. It's awesome. I mean, uh, I've got uh, four other people to help me solve all the problems we need to do, uh, especially the dynamic environment we're finding up in Iraq and Afghanistan and in Syria is, uh, they're complicated. So to run solutions by different people on the aircraft is amazing. Uh, we work as a team, we work as a, it, it, almost like a, it's a sheet of music. It's an orchestra. We're all playing the same music. Uh, some of the computing power and stuff that I don't have, I make up with with uh, gray matter. Just a lot of brain power going on up there. Uh, so uh, I'm always amazed at the team, like you said, the teamwork and just the cooperation with my, you know, my fellow crew members in, in, in solving a problem. Um, let's talk about uh the prolonging the life of the B-52. Uh, the original plan, even though I was a, a younger reporter at the time, when 2040 came out that the airplanes were going to be in 2040, uh, there was some amazement at that because it's sort of a late 1940s requirement and it's a 52 because its first flight was 52. The newest airplane was delivered in, I think, 61, 62 tops uh, of the hundreds and hundreds. I think it was 800 or so that were delivered, although even you know, much, well, about 80 or so uh, are in the Air Force inventory now. Uh, talk to us about um, you know, it was surprising recently in an Air Force conference to be told that, well, we, we really do have to go to an eight-engine configuration. Going to a four-engine configuration is not likely what we need to do. Talk to us, why still eight engines, and why is re-engineing something that's really important to increase the longevity of the airplane? Even though the TF-33 has been a great engine, mm -hmm. but it's time to go to another power plant. Well, a lot of it has to do with the eight engines versus four it has to do with just straight aerodynamics and the current configuration of the aircraft as it is and retrofitting those engines on it. As far as actually replacing the engines, that has a lot to do with just overall cost. Fuel consumption and more, more importantly, probably maintenance overhaul costs are making the uh, t current TFs a little hard to handle. Uh, we can definitely sustain them as we do in most cases. We're gonna roll our sleeves up and we're gonna do what we need to do uh, to keep the aircraft sustainable, but uh, we have the resources and we have the ability to think about how to do things better and so this is a good success story of how can we make this airplane better? How can we think about doing things a little bit better? And, and how much of that is also power production? Because if you guys look at it, every electronic system you put on the airplane, that's more power drain. How important are actually the generator sets that go with these new engines? Absolutely important. Um, we have, as we upgrade to different systems, uh, more modern systems and avionics on the aircraft that increases our power load on the aircraft. So uh, the more power production we can get and the more we can do it efficiently is extremely important. That's one thing we're hoping to get from the re-engineering program if it goes forward. Um, uh, anybody who's an airplane fan has a special place in their heart for the B-52 because it's cool on so many different levels. Uh, in part from when it was uh, designed, it's got eight engines, it's got center line landing gear, it, it, it crabs and offsets as you saw, you know, going down the runway, it does, it does the really cool dance to make sure that that system works, otherwise you're not going to be landing. Mm -hmm. um, tell us why you think this is the coolest airplane ever. What are all the factors that make this the coolest airplane? Well, first off, it's that rich history you're talking about. It's amazing to me to think about uh, 
where these tails have been and what they've seen. Uh, personally, I can say from my own experience, uh, the aircraft next to us, uh, <laughs> Aircraft 60, I flew that in a combat into our Iraqi Freedom for the first night and shot cruise missiles off of it. Uh, so even for myself, just looking around, the history is amazing. Uh, the other thing is, is we offer, like I said before, we offer a capability just based off of who we are. I can stay around uh, much, much longer than many of the fighter aircraft out there. I carry more munitions than they do. Uh, it's just a wonderful feeling to know that the force multiplier that we've got is there. And oh, by the way, uh, with the strategic deterrence that we provide as a B-52 force, uh, the symbol of the B-52 is known throughout the world and it deters our enemies and that's that's an excellent feeling to know that you're a part of that. Um, you know, we're talking about heritage and uh, hopefully we're going to get a chance to talk to him, but if we don't, uh, one of your uh, maintainer uh, officer in charge, a uh, young lieutenant was over and he was talking to us. Talk to us a little bit. Of the, I'm going to let you tell the story because sure. I thought it was just so amazing, uh, you know, that, that this is a multi-generational community. Absolutely so. In Travis's case, his father was a maintainer on B-52s as well, and I think Travis was even saying that his uh, office at Minot was his father's last office at Minot before he retired. Uh, I know crew members that have fathers and grandfathers that have flown this aircraft. Uh, some of our general officers, uh, General Tibbetts, his son has flown this aircraft. Uh, it's, it's amazing to think just, hey, look, there is a lineage. Uh, I was thinking about it the other day. My son is five years old. He's got a good chance of probably flying this aircraft. So that's interesting. Yeah. So uh, you're gonna you're gonna start. You got uh, there was obviously a lot of B-52 paraphernalia at home to to help steer him in the right direction. Oh, absolutely. You got to have your I love me wall. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and uh, I, a lot of it is at home. Some a lot of it's in the office. Uh, we do have to make concessions for for what 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 needs to go on the walls and what doesn't need to go on the walls. <laughs> Sir, thanks very much. Absolutely Best of luck for the, for the rest it. of the deployment, and uh, really appreciate it and look forward to staying in touch with you guys. Absolutely. Thanks. Appreciate it.